Hello, everyone. This is another episode of todebate.net, and this is episode, if I'm not mistaken, 97. Just listen to that. Whatever we episode. decide on, the order is not set in stone. It's defined mm. by my, by my, the order of me editing episodes. And who's me? <laughs> me is Dirk. Ah, One of your two hosts, and who is you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Sebastian, always the same other part of the two co-hosts. Uh, how many do you have in the backlog? What, you co-hosts know, or episodes? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Oh, here's another version of me, and here's another version of me. <laughs> You're the one who claims to have clones of himself walking around. I um, wish... I wish. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe two or three. Okay. Uh, some sometimes sometimes it feels like we have topics that shouldn't wait for too long, so <laughs> they jump the the line. I actually, today may be a topic that is uh, maybe a uh, something that is in in our times and may not be relevant that much. Who knows? Let's see. Uh, in the in the next uh, years. Um, the topic is the cancel culture. Uh, how would you define it? Uh, t- I know I came up with it. You, yeah, but- you came up with it. And uh, actually defining that term was one of the challenges preparing for this debate. So I wonder, how would you define it? And what made you suggest the topic? Um, I came up with a topic before I go to the definition because of a letter that has been published by Harper's Magazine a week ago. Um, it was signed, co-signed by I think 140 authors, writers, famous ones like Salman Rushdie, Malcolm Gladwell, J.K. Rowling, uh, who were calling for, in a somewhat vague terms, um, to say every expression is in in a way is, is is good to have. You should not ban people or cancel them, rather from uh, being invited to TV shows or from performing in theaters because they have said something that may disturb your thinking. Uh, I say it was very vague because there was referring in um, with insinuation about specific cases where, without naming them. And that that triggered me, that triggered, it had a quite a bit of a backlash also in the main mainstream media. Um, people you know, advocating for it, people against it. Uh, on Twitter, obviously, a lot of people reacted as well. And I thought, well, that could be an interesting topic because it's not very easy to know what to do with that topic. Is it freedom expression, of expression? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, and, and so we come to that definition. So can, the cancel culture is not so much about banning people from being able to express themselves, but rather limiting the platforms where they are invited so, to express uh, just, themselves. Just uh, one step back. Assume... Assume our listener are not privy to the discussion around cancel culture, haven't followed the conversation. What is it? Uh, if you have haven't heard the term before, uh, what is cancel culture? So you uh, let, let's let's have two examples. Um, one is because I mentioned J.K. Rowling, who's the writer of the Harry Potter series. So she has um, apparently made comments against transgender people. So a number of people have called for her to not be invited anymore to a number of, I guess, universities or be stripped out from university awards that she's gotten over the years because she has a huge influence, obviously, since she's widely read and has a natural platform. And people or the online mob or a mob or a crowd of people are calling for her not to be able to speak at these various uh Opportunities, basically, not to invite her. Another example which could qualify for the cancel culture is all these statues of ex slave traders in the 18th, 19th century, uh, whether in the UK or in the US, mainly. I think this is where this is mainly happening at the moment. And these statues, these statues are taken down. Right? In a way, I think it participates to the same movement of canceling or erasing uh, visibility from, in this case, people who are dead, but who are who are famous in their times and whose names we still hear around, like Cecil Rhodes um, and everything. When you have Rhodes in the name, is usually connected to Cecil Rhodes, um, but an ex-slave trader and kind of erasing all this. So it extends, and I think, to the borders of that cancel culture. I think initially it's mainly about famous people currently, celebrities, but it could be anyone. It's like if you actually write something that is racist, 
uh, or maybe borderline or that I don't like, I will call for an online mob to say, oh, we should not invite Dirk on, a, on our podcast. We should not. We should call for his recognition from Google because he's, you know, uh, not representing the Google ethics yeah. in a proper way, even though you may have expressed yourself in a personal capacity, et cetera, et cetera. We're not talking about corporate politics at this point. So yeah, um, so, so I I you just used a few terms that um, that came up uh, when I prepared for the debate as well. Um, so you you use the word mob. There is there is a term called mob culture as well, right? And cancel culture and mob culture seem to be closely related. It seem to be cancel culture seem to be a phenomenon of people being kicked out of the public sphere on the grounds of having said something that offended people that are, for a lack of a better, a better framing right now, um, in, a, in a discourse as having a right to be offended. And um, it's actually usually the mob, the, the on, a group of online, mob is a bad word, I guess. Uh, it has a bad sound, ring to it. But it's basically a spontaneous group of online activists right. that do the kicking. Um, so, so people are, are kicked out of the public sphere, um, denied visibility, denied forum, cannot contribute anymore. So with the goal to, to, uh, to stop or punish them in a sense for what they allegedly have done or said or what it what it was that this caused or whatnot. That's that's one aspect that I found. The other aspect, of course, is um, and I don't know what the proper term for this is. Um, there is an extension to this that in our, today's uh, media sensitive world more and more companies, more and more media houses, more and more universities, uh, uh, every institution you can think of is heavily influenced by those mobs. So sometimes people are not even only denied the, the public sphere anymore. Sometimes people, people basically lose their job on the grounds of something that has been heard that they may have said or not. Um, or it's like almost like a thought crime Um not, I don't want to go ahead with the with the debate, but uh, it is, and reading up on all of this and hearing debates and conversations, this is a massive beast of a topic. So I I just want to yep. say up front, we probably cannot do this topic justice. Neither you nor, nor I, um, but we can just pick a, a, sl a part of this um, as an element, and it's probably one of those topics where neither one of us really. Uh, completely comfortably sits on one position and can neatly say this is this is how I see it because it's the more I the more I worked my way through this the more confused I got at some point uh, <laughs> like yeah yeah so actually I will take back on the what I mentioned about the slave trade and the statues I don't think this is exactly the cancel culture I think it it just touches it's just all these connected topics so. Uh, maybe let's strip this out and focus on the boycott aspect. Yeah. Right? Boycotting people who are raising controversial issues um, or, and you can define controversy however you want. Right? It could be an obviously racist, but it could be like at the borderline of racism or other controversial topics. Yeah, it and sounds almost like everything it? that can be seen as offensive by a larger group of people. Correct. Yeah, and uh, by the way, um, the part where the statues come in, I agree with you. Actually, the statues feel very much like something that's not really fitting that definition. But a close friend to our podcast, Donald Trump in the US, seemed to bring that in with all the other stuff. And I think this is where where a massive political beast uh, raises his head or its head, um, because. The one thing we definitely cannot dissect here is that cancel culture, mob culture, throwing down slave uh, statues and whatnot in the U.S. specifically seem to be something that in in the discussion is connected to the radical left somehow. Um, and I think knowing that our listeners are from all over the world, but dominantly in the U.S., one thing I want to call out, this connection between watching language or or fighting these things and the left is not universally true across the globe. This seemed to be something that's right now a connection that's a lot a lot of people draw in the U.S. and in, in the toxic political climate that we observe over there. Um, but the phenomenon that there is something like cancel culture and mob culture seem to be, at least in the West, something 
something very common. Um, um, I, I just felt like these the, the statues come in because people politicize the whole thing and the statues seem to be something that is as of now mostly happening in the US and to some degree in 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 some other countries but not not to the degree uh, not not even close to the to the degree that it's right now a US phenomenon I saw you nodding so I I'm preaching to the I, choir I I agree with you. I'll, I'll, I'm going to wait for your arguments because otherwise we're going to do the debate before the debate. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. No, I, I just felt like this topic deserves a little bit of uh, a closer definition. Introduction. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, we never we never bothered telling our audience the actual motion. <laughs> we just talked about cancel culture so far and probably by now we lost half of them. What is the motion today, uh, Sebastian? Actually, the, I think the, the motion is probably the shortest one we've ever had. It's four words. I don't recall. We usually have fairly short motions, but I think this one is the shortest. Cancel culture is censorship. Full stop. Or period, as American American English would go for. Cancel culture is censorship. We flip the coin, as usual. Uh, Dirk, you'll be in uh, favor of the motion. You'll be defending the fact that cancel canceling people, boycotting them, is akin to censorship, and I'll be against that motion. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues for the motion. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. That's a famous quote, and a lot of people have been credited with that quote. The point of this quote is it's a fundamental right in our modern society it's a fundam fundamental element of freedom that we are able to say things and allow to say things without being scared of being thrown in jail or punished in any meaningful way for it why is it important it is important because it allows us to air grievances and to make visible what is toxic in our society maybe or maybe needs to be addressed and some of these grievances or issues that need to be addressed may not be framed in a way that each of us likes or any of us likes or some of us like they may be offensive to some they may be painful to listen to but they are just as important to be said the same because things are better dealt with out in the open than in hiding. Now, uh, the motion today, cancel culture is censorship. Censorship is if somebody comes and uh, because of disapproval of your language, choice of word, things you did, things you said, um, stops you from acting out your freedom of speech, gives uh, takes away the platform, you can act out your freedom of speech. And if that is a definition of censorship, then I don't think it's easy to dispute that cancel culture, which in a nutshell denies you the right to say what you want to say on the grounds of potentially offending somebody else, uh, well, that is censorship by definition. One of my next uh, arguments will be about who is doing the censoring, and uh, why this may or may not be a good or a bad thing. But that's beyond my first segment. Um, I leave it at that. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. So when we talk about the cancel culture, it's about also the freedom of expression that some people have to call for other people to be removed from positions of influence. The important words that I've just uh, in the in the sentence I've just mentioned are calling for. We, this is a call for people to be removed, and this is again in itself freedom of expression. So you're opposing basically the threat or the visible threat of censorship against the freedom of others to express their own opinion and say, well, these people, these other people, should not have a right to be in their position. So that's already one problem that we have here. Um, are we censoring one group or are we censoring the other from expressing their own desire to see others being removed from a position of influence? Censorship is an extreme word. There is no inquisition here, and I'm very eager to hear you talk about 
who actually can act on it because there's no overarching authority deciding to censor anyone. Now, there are people, there are institutions, universities, organizations which can act on removing people, uh, and that can be more contentious, right? the actual act. But calling for removal, I don't see the problem with it. And this cancel culture is about calling for it and bringing up topics that would otherwise have been hidden and have been hidden for years. It's a way to collectively, because it's often a group of people, it's not an individual, uh, but it can be, uh, it's a way to collectively not endorse problematic people. And finally, we're uh, trying to cut out people who have been abusive and who have been getting away with it for years. It's not about preventing them from expressing their opinions. They can do that. In fact, that's how we know they're being uh, racist or have a problem with LGBT groups, et cetera, et cetera, because they have expressed themselves. It's about limiting their access to mainstream media, for instance. We'll go uh, in more details afterwards because I'm out of my two minutes. I want to talk about a case-by-case basis because it's very easy to be very broad and very vague. But my main point here is to say this is also freedom of expression, to call for people to be removed from their positions of influence. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. You would be right if calling for is would be the only thing we call cancel culture but we wouldn't have this debate right now if it wouldn't lead to action in our modern world we seem to have a trend that more and more things are actually delegated to masses of people organizing themselves on social media and institutions like political institutions or society institutions or companies reacting to that perceived group of people's demands and we talk about cancel culture right now precisely because words follow action. So it's not about demanding that somebody is not voicing her or his opinion anymore. It is about uh, actually institutions following through and removing the opportunity for people to air whatever they have said or want to say. And in many cases, this is not even related. So people are not calling for, let's say, J.K. Rowling to not say allegedly racist things anymore. I'm not even sure, or transphobic things, or whatever she has said. Um, they call for her not making an appearance at a university, no matter what she talks about. And this is a totally different game. All of a sudden, random people on the internet are judge, jury, and executioner in once, and institutions are following through, effectively cutting off people that uh, may or may not have said something that may or may not be offensive to maybe the people that call for it or not off their opportunity to enact their free speech. So who are the institutions? Yes, I would say for some weird dynamic, the social media culture in which we live right now um, led to the place where basically the institutions follow the the masses and this is not what uh, the the core idea behind our democratic institutions is and it's actually harmful because who knows if uh, jk rowling actually is transphobic who knows if person xyz really said uh, or really meant what uh, what people claim that uh, that they say um who knows if something should be able um, sometimes people should be able to say outrageous things and and still have a forum to voice their ideas especially if the idea may not be related to whatever they have said and sometimes people also change their opinion i think a lot of the the folks that call for um cutting off people from the public sphere kind of forget that they may have said outrageous things in the past as well they also forget that it's uh that it's not really clear if all the people joining in on the shouting match uh, if they are actually any better a lot of this is actually virtual signaling so people are r coming together in groups calling for something and others follow through all of this is a, a toxic combination that in the end will stifle free speech because maybe 
people think twice now what they say and how they say it. Maybe people are more careful now um, what they what they air in terms of criticism because as soon as you touch certain sensitive topics, chances are that somebody jumps at you with the argument you may have offended some group and on the grounds of having offended someone, you're suddenly not allowed to say whatever you wanted to say anymore. And if that's not censorship, then I don't know what is. Sebastian, let's hear his rebuttal. Let me go through your various points. One of the points you mentioned at the very beginning was to say the problem that it leads to action. Words and calling for people to be removed from positions of influence or, or a, a lectern of public speaking um, leads to the action of them being actually removed. Well, maybe in my maybe it's, sometimes it's warranted. Maybe they should be removed. Now, that's why I'm calling for a case-by-case -case analysis. Um, what, we cannot just put everyone in the same bag. It's not the same thing as denying the Holocaust, as maybe being racist. I don't know. I'm not saying it is or it is not. I'm just saying every case has to be treated differently and how often you repeat it, to whom, and, and avoid the distortion of what someone may have said. Um, so I would call for a proper investigation whenever that is necessary, not by the police, but by the institution. If you're going to have a topic on diversity and equality these days, maybe you're not going to invite J.K. Rowling, right? That's maybe an obvious one. But if you have a discussion about what it is to be a writer, a famous writer these days, maybe it's acceptable to have her or not. Um, so that's why I want to be very specific on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, a due diligence has to be conducted. You also mentioned... It should be okay for people to say outrageous things. Again, I really think it depends on what it is. In fact, I'll come back to this in a second, uh, because if, uh, let's say, um, we talk about less famous people, nothing prevents you or me or anyone from actually today having an online platform. Now, you may tell me, oh, but YouTube is going to ban me, or Twitter is going to ban me, or Facebook is going to kick me out. Well, did you know, and it's completely a complete coincidence, because I checked this out maybe a week ago, InfoWars, um, the website by Alex Jones, which is the super controversial American figure with tons of controversy theories, who has been kicked out of YouTube, uh, I believe, and Facebook and a bunch of very well-known media platforms, actually the website is still live. So it is still possible for someone who's pretty much right-wing Out, outright, whatever you want to have and call uh, call him, actually still has the platform online. And there is still a domain host. There is still uh, the possibility for that person, individual, to express themselves. Now, granted, they may not have the same visibility, but this is what is maybe important at this point to distinguish between being able to express yourself, which is the case, to having the visibility. You mentioned that people can change. That's true. I agree. Um, and this is where I don't have a good answer, a good solution. Maybe there's some time that is needed Uh, when you have or someone has made a remark that is extremely offensive and outrageous or, bl or bluntly, let's say, racist, maybe some time needs to pass before, you know, just to let things pass a little bit before you can come back on the public sphere. Now, I don't know how much time that is. There is no, again, overarching authority, and that's not an easy uh, question to, uh, to solve. Um, what else did I have here? Oh, my conclusion, my concluding point here is hopefully by calling for people to be removed from a position of influence or from a public lectern is to call and, and trigger a discussion. Is it okay or not to actually be racist these days in 2020? If we talk about racism, for me, the answer is obvious. It's no, right? This is not about having an outrageous standpoint. Uh, I mean, it has been proven over and over again that there's no significant difference genetically between members of the human race, right? So I think this is a closed debate Uh, for the past few decades. Maybe there are other controversial topics and we can again discuss on a case-by-case -case basis. So I would be very keen to define what is you know, acceptable from what is not. And maybe if it's not, then at least we trigger a conversation, right? Um, it doesn't force the person to be removed from that position because again, this is calling for it, not actually doing it. And that's another ball game. It's another investigation that is required. <laughs> Final statements. Dirk goes first. Let me be provocative here. If you despise somebody's position, then you don't resolve for the problem by removing their voice. You resolve for that problem by engaging in a debate and by acting against whatever physical 
activities you think are the ones that need to be addressed. So a racist police that is shooting uh, black people more likely than white people, that's something concrete that you have to work on. Somebody being a racist and thinking uh, a racist, you cannot resolve that problem by, by shouting them down or by removing the, their right to express whatever their thoughts are. You need to work on the examples and you need to engage with them. And I get that this is something people are tired of and this is something people rather do not. But I do think that's the only way to really properly deal with it. Otherwise, we are in the realm of thought crimes, that thinking the wrong thing is already bad and saying it is already punishable and we don't even get to the acting. And that's actually a dark, dark place to venture to. So I would say cancel culture is censorship, for um, unfortunately. And that concludes my argument. Sebastian. In conclusion on my side, uh, I will insist that this is a call for action, a trigger to have a conversation on the topic, on topics and people specifically uh, who are carrying these controversial topics that have been hidden for a while that is not just not enough mainstream and not put at the surface especially that nowadays anyone anyone can express themselves and say whatever they want you can do this basically almost for free now doesn't mean you, you'll have people listening to you uh, and hopefully if you're racist nobody will listen to you but unfortunately there are people who will listen to that but it is possible today it's not like 20 years ago or 40 years ago or a century ago where you could indeed completely shut people out from expressing themselves or having any kind of platform and visibility. Uh, I do think there are consequences to saying things which are not just controversial but plain wrong. Uh, and again, this is why I'm calling for being extremely specific and deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis. If you're a university professor, you cannot be racist because you will have an audience in your classroom of a diverse set of people who are coming from all kind of ethnic groups. So if you're racist, there's going to be a risk of bias mechanically. So again, let's treat this on a case-by-case -case basis. You may be racist all you want, but you may not be a university professor or be invited to, let's say, a diversity panel uh, when it's about, you know, what can we do to have a more diverse, let's say, police workforce. You want to react, but it's too late. I agree with you. I don't want to have a thought crime. I don't want this to become uh, into the criminal system. It's just to open up a conversation. So that's why I don't think it's censorship per se. And now you can you can jump on. <laughs> now that's that concludes our debate first and foremost. And if our listeners have opinions on the matter, which I really hope they do, um, let us know. Uh, we are curious to learn. Um, what what is your experience with the matter? What do you think about it? Is cancel culture in its current form censorship? Yes or no? As you said, um, Dirk, if uh, our listeners have any uh, viewpoints on that topic of the day, topic of the month, uh, which is not going to go away for, I think, for a, a bit of time. Uh, I do hope it does go away in a positive way in the next few years though uh, because of what well, you and I think on the on that, on that aspect uh, just let us know in the comments or email us and other, otherwise uh, stay tuned we'll have another debate coming thank soon you. thanks in for our, picking the topic Sebastian <laughs> I like how you freaked out about it yeah but then it, is, it is, a, is a scary topic it's a huge topic <laughs> and we probably got it wrong and offended a million people but uh as long as they That's engage okay. with us and debate with us we're not, and refrain from cancelling us this time, uh, we are good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't use a clickbait title, such as Dirk is denying the dot, dot, dot. <laughs> All right. We call it a day. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you to our listeners. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.